Hi, I'm Dr. Donnie Wilson, and welcome to How Humans Heal. In this episode, I want to get a little bit more personal than usual and share with you some about my experience with stress in my life and help you to really be able to look at what could be possible stresses in your life and how they might be influencing what you choose going forward and what maybe support you need to recover from all of those stresses that we're exposed to. Because when it comes down to it, as humans, we're gonna be exposed to stress. To me, it's part of it is just acknowledging that being human involves some stress exposure. Actually, the research shows that over 60% of us had what is considered an adverse childhood event, meaning a severe stress in childhood. And at least 70% of us have experienced a major stress, loss, or trauma in adulthood. And considering that we all just came through a pandemic for the past couple years, we know that we've all been under some major stress. So here's the thing is that what can happen is when we exist as humans in these stressful environments and stressful experiences, it starts to feel normal to be stressed. In fact, we can actually become addicted to feeling stressed. It's like our nervous system is so used to an exposure to stress that we start to anticipate it. Our cortisol levels and adrenaline levels anticipate the next stress that's gonna come along. And in my book, The Master Stress Book, I call this being stuck in stress mode, where we, it's like literally the light switch is flipped on, ready for the next major stress that's going to come along. And when we're stuck in a stress mode, even if this means, even if you're trying to sleep, even if you're on vacation, even if you're like, there's nothing going on a Saturday afternoon and I still feel stressed, then you know you're stuck in stress mode. and. What happens is literally our nervous system, the the signals that turn off the stress response stop working because we're constantly exposed to stress. And so then the body gets into a pattern of constantly being ready for stress. And this causes a disruption in our healthy cortisol levels and adrenaline levels. Cortisol and adrenaline are our main stress hormones, you could think of it that way. Cortisol is a hormone and adrenaline is actually really a neurotransmitter or a catecholamine, it's also called. We think of adrenaline as what makes our heart race, makes us sweat, makes us ready to run and respond and get away from the stress, right? And we need some adrenaline all the time. It gives us energy, it helps our brains work. It Dopamine is part of the adrenaline cascade and dopamine gives us pleasure and reward, sense of reward and a mood, good mood. So we need, it's not that we want zero adrenaline and it's not that we want zero cortisol. These are substances that we need a healthy amount of every day, day in and day out. In fact, we need different amounts of cortisol depending on the time of day. Cortisol should be higher in the morning and gradually decreasing through the day. So these are messengers in the human body and nervous system that are essential and normal. It's just that when we when our when we're under constant stress starting from early childhood and even influenced from our parents' exposure to stress and our grandparents' exposure to stress influences what your system is doing today in response to stress. And it's very individualized. It's not the same for everyone. As much as we, yes, are all human and we all have cortisol and adrenaline, that doesn't mean we all have the same levels. Some people have high cortisol at certain times a day, too high in the morning or too high in the middle of the day, too high at night. Some people have too low cortisol at different times a day. Some people have too high adrenaline or too low adrenaline at different times a day. And the reason I know this is because I've been measuring thousands of patients cortisol and adrenaline levels for the past two decades, including myself. I These can be measured in urine. The adrenaline is measured in urine, including dopamine, including norepinephrine and epinephrine. And 
We can also measure cortisol levels in saliva or urine at different times a day. So we can actually see what's going on. Imagine that, we don't have to guess. We can actually measure. And when I measure, I can see that we're not all the same. We are at different places with our stress modeness. <laughs> so one person in stress mode might have high cortisol, high adrenaline. Another person might be low cortisol, low adrenaline, for example. And this is what I identify as the stress types. These are the most common patterns of imbalanced cortisol and adrenaline are the five stress types. So understanding that part about our stress response and how we get stuck in stress mode, what I want to dig in deeper is to think about how, what are the stresses we're exposed to and how do we navigate this? Because it's essentially like sometimes we're just trying to get through the next day. We're under so much stress. Like I remember when my daughter was young and I was running my practice and seeing patients and trying to keep up with my house and everything going on. It felt like I could barely be running, sprinting through each day, barely getting enough sleep before the next day. And I know many of you feel the same way because I hear it from my patients all the time. How are you supposed to ever catch up when you can't even keep up, right? It's like we're in a constant marathon day after day of, of whether you have children or not, whether you have whatever work you're doing or business you're running or parents you're taking care of or, uh, you know, all the things that we're doing, there's so much that can take up space in our lives that's stressful. And sometimes it's things that we don't have control over. It could be something that happened, uh, a death in the family, a, a, an accident, uh, you know, things happen that we have no control over and we find ourselves in these situations and we're like, now what am I going to do? I'm just trying to get through the next hour, let alone five minutes, right? And sometimes we start to realize like, wow, how am I going to shift this pattern? And it can feel overwhelming. Believe me, I get it because I've been there. I was also during that time having severe migraines, which these migraines would take me out. I couldn't take care of anybody. I was on the floor so nauseous and vomiting for sometimes 24 hours and days to recover from that. I, I was like, how am I ever going to get this to stop? Here I am a naturopathic doctor and I can't figure it out. What am I going to do? And so I just had to keep on. I just thought about it and researched it and kept on working and trying different things until I finally figured it out. And actually it was in solving my migraines that I figured out the protocol that I just told you about with the stress types and helping all of you to recover from stress. Because what I ended up finding is that it had more to do with figuring out what was thrown out of balance by stress. What actually got disrupted by stress? The cortisol levels, the adrenaline levels we talked about. Also, serotonin can get depleted. And GABA, these are calming neurotransmitters that are essential for our nervous system. And they, they're trying to help us keep up with stress, but we get depleted over time because there's so much stress, we just run out. And our, they're made in our bodies, they're actually mostly made in our digestive tract. But if we're under stress, our digestion and our gut bacteria can't keep up making enough. And so we get depleted. Same with our nutrients. We tend to, in different people get depleted in different nutrients. Some people get depleted in iron or magnesium is a common nutrient depletion. And when we get depleted in these nutrients like iron and magnesium, now we don't metabolize our neurotransmitters well. We end up more likely to have high adrenaline. We end up having more likely to have menstrual symptoms because we're not metabolizing estrogen well. So it's like one thing snowballs into the next thing, right? You just go, this is not fair. How come right when I'm down and stressed, my system gets depleted and then it causes more health issues and it snowballs. And believe me, I wish that was, this wasn't the case, but I see it over and over when I read the research and study this physiology, we can clearly see what becomes what's called a cell danger response, where the 
cells in our bodies are getting such a stress signal constantly that it's like everything, all the metabolism comes to a standstill. Then we're not processing our hormones well, our thyroid function isn't working, our mitochondrial function is not working. We drop our energy levels, we get tired, we get anxious, we can't sleep all at the same time. It's like, how can patients say to me, Dr. Donnie, how can I be tired and anxious and wired at the same time? It's not logical. How, how does that add up, right? Like logically, it doesn't seem like it should make sense. I just talked to a patient yesterday she says to me, how is that even possible that I can be this wired and this tired at the same time? <laughs> and what I say is that it's, it's sometimes our bodies are not that black and white. Things are more complex than that. It would seem like if you push on the gas pedal and the brakes at the same time, you would be at a standstill. But actually what happens in the human body is like there's more complexity. So you could have one system that's causing you to feel overstimulated, like say you have high adrenaline, let's say. And at the same time, you could have low cortisol that's making you feel tired or low iron levels that are making you feel tired. So you, if you have a mix of things going on, you're going to have a mixture of symptoms. And so I encourage you to not get too caught up in the symptoms. Listen to your body. Definitely. Definitely. If you're feeling any of these symptoms, this is your body trying to tell you it needs help. It's trying to tell you something's out of balance. But what we need to do is we need to look at the symptoms and look for patterns, which is why I developed a quiz, the stress type quiz, which you can find in the Master Stress book and you can find on my website. I looked at the symptoms in the patients and I look for patterns so that I could see this pattern of symptoms is related to this pattern of imbalance so that we can actually be strategic and efficient about correcting it. It's not about just another crutch, right? Like we could just take some more caffeine or we could take some stimulatory medication like Adderall, for example, or we could take something to knock us out like a benzodiazepine, like Xanax. You know, we can use these medications to kind of overemphasize and get us to where we need to be temporarily, but they're not actually solving the issue. They're just temporarily pushing things in one direction or the other. Whereas there's actually ways to correct the situation. There actually are ways to rebalance the levels. And it's actually pretty amazing that it's not some rocket science. It's actually <laughs> using nature as science. It's actually using nutrients and herbs and exposure to nature even that actually helps us reset. When it comes down to it, as humans, we are part of nature. We're very responsive to nature. Our bodies are constantly picking up on signals from our environment, light and darkness from day and night, sounds loud or quiet, it's, it's picking, we're picking up on cold and hot. We're picking up on toxins in our environment, smells. Our, our brain picks up on all of this. Let's use that to our advantage. Our brain picks up on when we're taking a deep breath versus a shallow breath. Our brain picks up on how much sleep did we get last night? And how much oxytocin in connection with other humans are we getting? Our brain and nervous system picks up on so much that we can use to our advantage that's not going to have negative side effects. The only side effect is to help you heal, right? The only side effect is to help your body recalibrate and rebalance. Let's use those activities and substances that actually help us rebalance and come really at a deep level, rebalance and recalibrate so that you can get back to your optimal self. These are I'm not talking about using a, a Band-Aid or a temporary solution to sort of fill in. No, we're talking about how do we actually find out what's out of balance for your system and get it back in balance. If you have, we can do blood work, specific blood work that's not going to show in your standard test, right? We need to go, we sometimes need to order specific tests. Sometimes they can be covered by insurance. Sometimes we need to pay out of pocket to get these specialty tests. But ultimately, it comes down to what really matters for you and your health. If you're not feeling good, and you can't be there for your family, and you can't be there for others, and you can't do what you are passionate about, then it's worth it to 
Invest in the kind of tests that are going to give you the information that helps you solve this once and for all. Because when you get this information, this is not just temporary information. This is information that you're learning about your body. And this is your body. It's it's the body that you're going to have for the rest of your life. So once you know, oh, my body needs more magnesium, then you're going to know likely your body needs more magnesium the rest of your life because that's your metabolic pattern and your stress pattern. And um, if your stress changes, that could change the dose a little bit, but you start to know, here's what my body needs when I'm under stress. Maybe for one person, it might mean they need more magnesium or magnesium three and eight specifically to metabolize adrenaline. And another person body doesn't have high adrenaline. They don't need necessarily more magnesium three and eight. They might actually need the opposite. They might need more tyrosine, which is the precursor to increase adrenaline. And some people need both more tyrosine and more magnesium. So it's a matter of understanding your system, your stress type, your levels. Do you have do you have low serotonin? Okay, then let's give the precursor nutrient 5-HTP to raise your serotonin. Do you have low GABA? Let's work on raising your GABA. Do you have imbalanced gut bacteria or leaky gut. Well, let's heal the leaky gut and let's rebalance your gut bacteria. That's possible. Yes, stress causes leaky gut. Yes, stress disrupts your gut bacteria, but that doesn't mean it's stuck that way. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that just taking more fermented foods and probiotics is going to solve it. We need to actually think it through and give the nutrients to help help your intestinal cells recover. And we need to feed you in a way that supports your gut bacteria, but not overdo it. This is the thing is a lot of times with the body, and this is one of the hardest concepts for us humans, believe me, me too, to to catch on to, is it's a matter of finding just the right amount. It's a matter of balance. How do we find the right amount to get the right balance and not too much that's going to be throwing us the other direction, right? It's like a pendulum. If our pendulum is way over here, but we do too much, we're going to swing it way way over to the opposite side. And now we're just on a big pendulum. Oh my goodness. I, some of you maybe relate to that. You've been there. You've been on both sides of the pendulum like me and you realize, oh my gosh, I don't need to overdo it. I don't need to overdo the healthy foods. I don't need to overdo the exercise. I don't need to overdo the intermittent fasting. I don't need to overdo. We don't need to overdo anything. If we overdo even something that's good for us, it can stress our system more. So really, I I encourage you to find your perfect, what we call Goldilocks. How do we find your perfect, just the right amount for your body, which is can be completely different for the next person. And the paradox is when you're more stressed, if you're having panic attacks, if you're, you, you feel like you can't even move without another stress trigger happening, that means that your stress radar is really tight right now. And everything you do, even sometimes something good, even if you try to meditate, you hit that stress radar again and you're right back into a stress response. It's not going to work that way. We, it's not going to, it's like, the more stressed we are and the worse the leaky gut and the worse the imbalance uh, and the deficiencies, and we can't, it doesn't work to do too much because we end up falling into the same vicious cycle and snowball effect. We have to do the opposite. We have to start gentle. So actually what I found in solving this for myself and, and many of my patients is we have to start more gentle than we think. We have to start to think, how can I do the smallest possible dose? Sometimes we open up capsules and we use sprinkle doses. We use the tiniest amount of, let's say, 5-HTP in some cases, and we gradually increase as your nervous system is able to accept it and use it and start making more serotonin. Sometimes we have to start so small because then we're not triggering a stress response. Then we can, the body can actually take it in and make friends with it and, and accept that it's there to be helpful and it can start to move through and it can start to shift the pattern. So sometimes we start so gentle. So I really encourage you to be gentle with yourselves. If you try anything and you feel worse, it means that you hit a stress response and your system, that was too much for your system. You have to back off and go much more gently 
much more carefully. It's actually the opposite of what we think. We're so used to and willing to do more, try higher, harder, work longer, <laughs> go more, right? We're so willing. That's what we've been taught. But actually, when you're trying to recover from stress, we have to learn the lesson is how do I go do less? How do I how do I get comfortable with being more gentle, with more calmness, with more peacefulness, with more evenness, with with just very small quantities and very tiny steps, because the more small steps we make that are moving us forward, they add up and then we're making more progress over time. If we try to skip forward, we end up backfiring and landing right back where we started again, or sometimes worse. It's not worth it. Believe me, I, I've been there. I've, I've overdone it so many times and end up right back on the bathroom floor with another migraine. Something a lot of people don't know is that too much stress can actually create an abundance of health problems like high blood pressure, high blood sugar, anxiety, migraines, insomnia, even fertility issues. This is because high stress puts your adrenal glands on overload. They release cortisol and adrenaline, which controls your digestion, hormones, immune system, energy, focus, and even your emotional response. So how can you beat stress when you don't know where to start? That's why we have a free seven day stress reset program. It's designed to help support weight loss, digestive healing, and hormone balancing. It includes support for integrating self-care, daily tips come to you by email and video, gluten-free, dairy-free meal plans, as well as grocery shopping lists, journal pages, and more. This free program will help you beat stress and put you on the path to wholeness in your body. Get your plan now for free at drdonnie.com. So believe me, I, got, I had to figure out how do I do this in such a way where I can really like almost crawl under the radar with the most gentle, gentle, tiny doses until I could retrain my nervous system, retrain my vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a nerve that communicates between the brain and the gut and back to from the gut to the brain. And the vagus nerve also communicates with other areas of our body. It's, the, it's our autonomic nervous system. It's our parasympathetic versus sympathetic. It's what signals calmness. We really need our vagus nerve working well in order to be able to activate it and signal calmness throughout our body. If our vagus nerve is only stuck in a stress response, triggering adrenaline and sympathetic response, we're just, it feels gonna really feel tight and you're gonna feel like you everything you do, you keep bumping into another wall and you can't, you're like, is there a door in this room? If there's a door, please show it to me, I want out, right? And this is the thing it can maybe some of you listening can you know relate it can really feel like you're you're stuck in your trapped and you don't know which way to move and you're you're just barely basically trying to survive in that situation and and it's really difficult it's no wonder that so many people end up turning to um medications to try to d dampen this or Unfortunately, that's when people get pushed to questioning their purpose in life because they're like, if this is what life is, I don't want to do this anymore. And so I really hope that this message gets to those of you who have felt hopeless and helpless and like, what else can I do? I'm stuck in this really tight stress response signal, likely from history of stress in the past and in not being able to figure out how to shift it and it just so happens that because I was there I, I would I've been there with anxiety and depression and and the pain and I and I had to find my way and that's how I figured out that we have to understand this paradox of stress that it's you know those those Chinese toys where if you pull your fingers apart it gets tighter right like some of you might know feel like that you're like every time I try to get out of the stress it gets tighter well, it's like that. So we have to, you to get out of that Chinese toy, you actually have to go slowly and more gently, right? That's how you get out of a stress response. You have to go more gentle. And we really need to be accepting of ourselves and our bodies. We're taught from a young age to be very critical of ourselves and our bodies. And so we have this critical, as soon as we start to feel stressed, then we're worried about what that's going to cause and we're mad at ourselves for feeling that way and that just perpetuates it right now it's just snowballing so we have to go okay let me and this is just a practice each day where you start to go 
I'm going to accept, like the more, I hope just listening to this helps you understand your body more. Oh, that's my vagus nerve signaling a sympathetic adrenaline response. No wonder everything feels tight and no wonder I'm sweating and no wonder my mind's racing. Let me just breathe it out for 60 seconds until this sympathetic nervous system goes through its thing. And then let me see, let me, let me figure out my stress type. Let me, you can do testing. It's available through my office to measure cortisol, measure your adrenaline, measure your neurotransmitters, measure your nutrients and see what got thrown off based on stress exposure for you and your body. And then we can start addressing it. I can teach you how with nutrients, with herbs, with, with, what I call recovery activities like journaling, listening to music, doing mindfulness or meditation, uh, spending time in nature. There's so many ways we can start to reprogram our nervous system and show our nervous system that we're safe, that we have to show our nervous system the things that are calming. Our, our nervous system is calmed by shapes and, sim, and uh, uh, sounds and and colors and symmetry from nature so what the more we can show you know spend time in nature what are we doing we're picking up on the colors in nature the symmetry of leaves and plants um, and and the light and darkness when a patient says to me oh i can't meet with you next week because i'm going camping i'm excited i'm like that's so great that's the best thing you're going to be in nature camping that is such an amazing reset because our nervous system picks up on all those signals so it's not even swallowing anything or do doing anything you know you're just being in nature and that's amazing so you can even if you can't go camping you can just bring nature into your day-to-day -day life in small increments. If you go, oh, let me do five minutes of looking out the window or looking at pictures of nature on even on a screen, on your TV screen, on your on your phone, um, or definitely if you can get out in nature, go for a walk, spend time with animals, listening to animals, listening to the sounds in nature. All of this helps recalibrate our nervous system our vagus nerve, and it signals calmness. As soon as our body even gets small doses, luckily, actually, we only need small doses of stress recovery creates a big positive ripple effect. So, you know, we, we, get, we get so much stress exposure that we don't even have to try to get stress exposure. That's just happening all the time anyway, right? But if we to, if we want to try to get anti-stress, it doesn't even take only a small percentage of anti-stress to counterbalance a whole bunch of stress. That's a good news. Like even if you get five minutes of anti-stress, I bet we, it would counteract five hours of stress, right? So you can really, even with small increments of anti-stress, you can make a big difference on your on counterbalancing the stress load. And the more you expose yourself to anti-stress each day, you start to shift this, right? Right now it's probably like this, we're under so much stress and so little anti-stress is totally out of balance. But if we start to go, oh, let me just raise my anti-stress a little bit. And, and then you might be able to lower your stress a little bit and this starts to shift. And then we start to rebalance your, cortisol and neurotransmitters and nutrients and you start to shift it more now you've got anti-stress in the form of calming neurotransmitters which i call your brake system if we if we're driving a car and there's no brakes you're gonna feel like you're just on the gas pedal flying ahead with no brakes all the time no that's going to be super scary and trigger more stress or if you don't have any brakes you're you you or if you don't have any shocks now you're feeling every bump on the road so now you're going fast and you're feeling every bump on the road right it's like oh my gosh i could some people tell me that's how they feel every day and i'm like okay let's first of all let's get some shock absorbers right <laughs> so that you're not feeling every bump on the road we need to raise your gaba levels we can do that with gaba we can do that with theanine we can raise up the shock absorbers so at least you're not feeling every single stress that you hit in the road and then we can build up your brake system. We can get some get some calming going on. We can get some serotonin and GABA so you have some brakes. So when, when the gas pedal goes down, you've got some brakes too. 
And then you start to feel like, oh, now I have more control over my experience of stress in my body. Because yes, it's one thing to say, well, one person, something that's stressful for one person is not stressful for another person. And some of that, I think, has to do with our biochemistry. If your biochemistry is more balanced, you're more likely to look at something and say, ah, all right, I can deal with that. We can move on and go with the flow, right? But if you're if everything feels like you keep hitting every bump in the road, then every bump feels huge. And so you're just like, I can't deal with one more thing, right? And then then you start to be able to have awareness for everything. The more you have this acceptance of yourself and your body and the human experience, then you realize we realize, okay, things are gonna happen. And it's normal sometimes to feel grief. It's normal to feel angry. It's normal to feel all the feelings, happiness, um, all of those feelings, frustration, embarrassment. These are human emotions. As humans, we are built with emotion, the ability to have feelings and emotions. So it's not, it's nothing to judge that. It's to say, oh, okay, if something was confusing or I experienced a loss in my life, I'm going to feel sad or I experienced something exciting. I'm going to feel happy. So these are feelings that we can then learn to feel because a lot of times in our childhood, we were not, we were told not to feel angry. We were taught, taught not to feel sad. And so we, we need to kind of allow ourselves to feel these feelings and to learn how to feel the feelings and communicate about them with other humans, which is again, not, not something we've learned. So we have to kind of learn how, how do I, if I feel my feelings are hurt, how do I express that to the other person? If I feel like I need to apologize for something, how do I express that to this other person? And it takes practice if we've not been doing it very much. Like anything, it takes practice. And so we can start to, the more we have compassion for ourselves and our experience with stress, the more we have compassion for others and their experience with stress, and the more we can communicate with each other about all of that. So um, I wanted to share those perspectives with you and just help you to understand like what you might be experiencing in terms of stress and how it feels to you in your day-to-day -day life and to hopefully give you hope that there's ways I can teach you to navigate this. There's ways that I can teach you to to you know do your stress type and start addressing it or do testing to find out your levels and start addressing them using nutrients start practicing mindfulness that helps you to uh, gain more self-love and compassion and practice connecting with others and just know that it's all a practice we're here as humans for this for to practice our human experience, to practice feeling feelings, practice connecting with others, practice being stressed and recovering from stress. Uh, ultimately, I think that's what our human experience is about. And the more that we can have be involved in that, the more we feel that we're living our lives. And if we're if we get stuck in that process and we don't feel like we can connect with others or follow our passion or uh, or do what we love, then that's when we really start to not feel well and also feel hard on ourselves. And so we want to be able to, you know, get help with that and be and to know that help exists, even though it's not part of the standard medical system. It's not part of the standard mental health system. It's unfortunately just not yet part of the standard system so don't you know it's not to say that you have to choose one or the other if you need a medication then take that medication that's helping you to stabilize but to say that you can also work on helping to rebalance and recalibrate and and learn to uh, experience your existence in a way where you can um, not feel trapped and tight and stuck.
and hopeless. There's there's definitely things we can do to help your system recover. As much as we know that we've all been exposed to stress, we also know there's a lot we can do to recover from stress, which is why I've written several books about it, including my most recent book called Master Your Stress Reset Your Health, because I wanted to go through hundreds of studies and find what are the best ways for humans to recover from stress. And I found that there's definitely a ton of research on this. I have it all in the book. Not only that, but I wanted to see if we, if the stress recovery is unique based on your stress type or your stress pattern. And lo and behold, it is that there's different ways of implementing diet changes and even sleep and even recovery activities and exercise. It's different for each person, for each stress type. So it's important to know your stress type, your stress pattern, and then implement your stress recovery and self-care based on your stress type. You're going to get way more efficient, and way more out of it. Yes, okay, everybody could meditate, but what if you could meditate based on your stress type? It's going to be more efficient. You're going to reach your goal faster. Right. So if you're all about wanting to feel better faster, the way to feel better faster is not about doing more or doing it the same as everyone else. The way to feel better faster is to know your stress type pattern so that you can implement smartly, efficiently and matching your body so that you're giving your body exactly what it needs. Then you're going to be recovering a lot faster. So that's what I found and that's what I why I felt so inspired to write about it and share it with all of you. And um, I can't wait for to to have you join me in learning your stress type pattern and implementing and experiencing what my patients experience, which is feeling better, feeling better energy, mood, sleep healthier weight, healthier, you know, living your passion, doing what you love, experiencing other relationships in your life, preventing chronic illnesses, preventing need for medications wherever possible. That's what we want to experience, right? We want to be preventing health issues and living as healthy as possible for as long as possible, right? So if you're, if that's what you're hoping for, if that's your goal, then you're in the right place and you've got the tools here, I invite you to join me in whichever format works best for you, whether it's ordering the book and reading the paperback or listening to the audiobook or listening to more How Humans Heal podcasts or reading the blogs or guides or meeting with me one-on-one or joining me in one of my group programs. I'm making it available in many different forms because again, we're not all the same. We're not all one size One size fits all in terms of how stress affects us. We're not one size fits all in terms of our stress recovery. So it's important that you, that I offer you lots of different ways so that you can know your stress type and you can implement in a way that's going to be most effective for you. Then I'm doing my, my job. I'm doing my best services. I'm saying, here's the information. Let's put it in a way that's going to help most for each of you in your individual ways. Thanks so much for joining me at How Humans Heal. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe um, or add this to your um, to your favorites so that you can hear from me when the next episode episode comes out. You can also sign up for my mailing list so that you receive newsletters from me. And I'm so glad you're here and look forward to connecting with you again soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to How Humans Heal. If you liked this episode, leave a rating and a review. And for more resources, visit drdonnie.com.